Hello, I'm Mary Ann Dalton, and welcome to Active Aging, a program devoted to exploring issues of importance to older people and people living with disabilities. Each month, we'll provide you with information and resources to help you live a healthy, satisfying, and independent life. This month, we'll learn about a unique program that supports families who'd like to care for sick or disabled loved ones at home. My guest today is Jeannie Lydon. She's director of the Adult Family Care Program at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Jeannie, welcome to the program. Hi, nice to be here. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know caregiving is one of those issues that so many families struggle with today, whether it's caring for you know an elderly um, parent or an adult child with a, a disability. It seems that caregiving can really take you know an economic, social, and emotional toll on a family. And so I think people are really surprised to learn that there are programs in the community like yours that can support that whole process and help people to kind of live up to their kind of promise to take care of their, their family member at home. And um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about adult family care. I'm very excited to talk about the Adult Family Care Program, who we now have family members that can get paid a tax-free stipend for taking care of their loved ones in home. That means a mother could take care of a daughter, a son could take care of a mother, an aunt to an uncle. Um, the only thing, they can't be a spouse or a legal guardian. So we also have some aging parents that maybe have, have a younger disabled child and now they can get a tax-free stipend for caring them at home. Well, that's huge because I know for many families, um, they it's sometimes, it is really an economic decision. Sometimes people have to leave their jobs and they then have no source of income, um, but they really want to you know, take care of that, that family member. So getting a tech, this, this is a mindset that has mm -hmm. changed over the years for us yeah. to work with families yeah. and feeling like it's really okay to take this mm -hmm. tax-free tax stipend. Yeah. Some family members have given up, you know, jobs and, you know, they've kept a loved one out of a nursing home. So getting the stipend helps them actually keep person keep this person at home longer. You know, it's interesting and, you know, and ironically, it, um, it really does help save um, the taxpayers money because in many cases these individuals would be in nursing homes um, at a great cost to to society is absolutely and we have had cases where we've taken people out of the nursing home and they're now in our programs where we found homes for them so we also have families taking care of families and we also have match situations where we have a participant that has a need and we'll find an appropriate caregiver for them oh interesting so people who are not family members will basically take in someone who might be a stranger to them into their home because they feel like they have that that room or absolutely um, yeah. oh that's that's interesting and we do like it this is a adult family care is a mass health funded program mm -hmm. for anyone 16 years or older who has a chronic medical or psychiatric diagnosis mm -hmm. that requires um, cues of supervision for at least one activity of daily living bathing okay. dressing whatever so or we have level one and a level two client. Mm -hmm. A level two client is a person that needs much more, uh, has a lot more complex needs, needing physical hands-on hands assist with mm -hmm. um, activities of daily living um, and maybe behavioral issues going on. Mm -hmm. So the, the tax-free stipend, of course, is based on that level two. And what's the maximum amount a family could get with the tax-free uh, stipend? A level two client, um, someone would make like $18,000 a year tax-free. Oh, interesting. Um, and Actually, caregivers can provide care to up to two clients in mm -hmm. a home, two part AFC participants in a home, expecting that someone could manage maybe two clients, changing from a level one, becoming more complex, being a level two. So um, someone could provide care for two people in the home. And what are the eligibility guidelines for the program? How would someone qualify to be a participant or a caregiver, I know there's um, different. For uh, participants, you have to be 16 years or older, uh -huh. be on math, mass health, mm -hmm. um, one of the SCOs mm -hmm. um, you could be on. Um, you need to, you need cues of supervision for one or more activities mm -hmm. of daily living. Yeah. A level one client mm -hmm. would be the cues and supervision. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that was a change over the past, um, about four years ago, I think. And that helped us be able to serve people like someone with a traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. um, somebody with um, maybe uh, mental health diagnoses such as bipolar or Asperger's mm -hmm. where 
they may be making some unsafe decisions out in the community mm -hmm. and with that cues and supervision from a qualified caregiver um, giving them cues okay did you take your medications mm -hmm. um, did you um, change your clothes today do mm -hmm. you know that you have a doctor's appointment at this time so that cues and supervision has allowed someone to say stay from the community that who may not actually have a lot of physical needs but they have needs in the kind of management of their life yeah. um, and then a yeah. level two client that's the more hands-on hands yeah. kind of thing chronic medical diagnoses at least two physical hands-on hands and some behavioral issues, so we see a lot of that too. So some very complex cases. Wow, and what would make someone qualify as a caregiver? What, what's the screening process? Because I know you do have a screening process for someone to be accepted into the program. Absolutely, um, and we are looking for caregivers. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for a qualified caregiver. Mm -hmm. We have our caregivers are screened thoroughly. First mm -hmm. we do a phone intake, mm -hmm. and we will tell them on the phone we have to come out and do a home assessment. Mm -hmm. We will do criminal background checks on the caregiver or anyone in the home who's 18 or over. Um, they will get personal professional references from mm -hmm. them. They need to have a physician's uh, a, a physical done with TB screening. Mm -hmm. And then we go out and assess the home. So we mm -hmm. do a whole screening process and then we'll inform them, yes, you are appropriate to be an AFC caregiver. So we have a list of um, caregivers that are looking for participants right now. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid of quality oh, age information. Wow. So yeah. if there's someone who maybe doesn't have a family member who could actually take them in, that then there, there's an opportunity for them to remain in the community rather than going into an institution. Absolutely, and with our caregivers, once a caregiver is qualified, we do a real eight hours of uh, clinical teaching and training mm -hmm. throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. um, our program, like I'm the director, but we mm -hmm. have a group of um, registered nurses and licensed social workers and we're required by MassHealth to do eight hours of clinical teaching and training mm -hmm. throughout the course of the year. So we do just about everything. It may be one month we may do something CPR, um, you know, Heimlich maneuver, choking. Mm -hmm. um, another time we might be talking about advanced directives, healthcare proxies. A lot of times we're doing a lot of teaching and training on caregiver stress, what it really means. Mm -hmm to provide care for somebody in your home, um, whether it be family member or not, um, that you still have the time for your, yeah. to take time for yourself. So does the staff also monitor the care to make sure that it meets some sort of standards? Yes, or? we oversee the home. So yeah. for our level one clients, require a nurse mm -hmm. to go out one month, the social worker the next. So mm -hmm. we have alternating um, nursing social work mm -hmm. visits. For our level two clients, we, the nurse and the social worker goes out monthly. Mm -hmm. So they go out and they say, you know, we have, we operate on an um, individual care plan mm -hmm. that we devise with the participant, caregiver, nurse, social worker, and we operate, we go out to the home to see how everything's going with the mm -hmm. care plan. Our nurses go out and if there are any new medical diagnoses, they're going to teach or reinforce something. Um, our social workers do a lot with uh, uh, caregiver stress, um, assisting um, anybody if they have mass health issues, they've lost health insurance or whatever, mm -hmm. um, finding community resources, assisting families with perhaps they need an adult day health program or something mm -hmm. for, um, it's too much for the person to be home all day mm -hmm. and, and getting some structure to the day. So uh, social workers really know the resources out there to assist the families to find adult day health programs mm -hmm. for their loved ones. So uh, I know there's so many success stories um, in the adult family care program. Could you give us some, you know, real life examples of how your program has helped individual families or or individuals who were placed in, you know, in, uh, someone else's? We could home. give you so many. Yeah. I'll, I'll give um, two, and mm -hmm. I'll say one. We had a recent um, person we came out of a nursing home. Um, in their late 70s, mm -hmm. had been in a nursing home for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And um, we found an appropriate setting for this person. It took a lot of work at the beginning. How do we train our mm -hmm. caregiver? There were some uh, behavioral things that, um, you know, from the nursing home mm -hmm. to the home. And with the supervision, like I said, we go in eight hours of clinical teaching to the mm -hmm. caregiver. And the diagnosis, this person had mental health diagnosis, so we really, what is that mental health diagnosis? Mm -hmm. If a person has Asperger's, we're gonna teach and train mm -hmm. our caregiver, what is it? Mm -hmm. um, 
what kinds of things to watch out for, and we're teaching and training throughout so they have an understanding. We're not going to just put somebody in a home mm -hmm. and this person has had, say, no experience with someone who may have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And we other cases, we have younger individuals mm -hmm. since the change of um, just needing cues and, and, uh, cues and supervision when it used to be physical hands-on-hands -hands mm -hmm. assist. We're seeing younger people with a traumatic brain injury that just with the supervision, you know, I can think of one individual that was um, kind of getting in a lot of trouble in his home environment, mm -hmm. and he could have been heading uh, probably, you know, some trouble with the law, mm -hmm. law making very poor decisions mm -hmm. for himself. And um, he's been in our AFC program for nine years. Um, he has a job working at Stop and Shop. Mm -hmm. um, our caregivers have, you know, they supervise him that he goes to his medical appointments to make sure that he sees his psychiatrist and his therapist, mm -hmm. that he takes his medications as prescribed, and assisting him, okay, sometimes he gets up late or he doesn't change when he goes to work. We want, you know, he wants the individual to leave the home mm -hmm. looking, you know, neat and clean, yeah. uh, presenting out in the community. Um, so a lot of that, yeah. Oh, that's great. So what advice would you give to families who have a loved one who's in a nursing home and they really would like to, to bring that person home and, and but they're afraid and I, I know that's a huge thing people are afraid of the the care that they sometimes need to provide and they won't be able to do it do you have any any thoughts what would you say to someone who who came to you absolutely you know first we have age information that would give give someone information mm -hmm. um, but once a referral comes in to us, we would do a phone intake mm -hmm. and then a screening mm -hmm. and really letting people know uh, what res resources are out there because sometimes someone will be afraid to take someone out of a nursing home for fear, oh my goodness, what, what's going to happen all day, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I work or whatever, and you can have a part-time job mm -hmm. and be an AFC caregiver okay. as long as that person is safe throughout the day. And we yeah. do safety of valves so people can be left alone three hours, mm -hmm. or, you know, up to yeah. three hours a day. And a lot of times someone having structure, you come out of a nursing home, we find an adult day health program, it may just be starting at a mm -hmm. couple of days, see how that goes, mm -hmm. maybe move up to three days. So knowing that that's there and knowing that you have the support, especially with the adult family care program, to have a support of a registered nurse mm -hmm. and a licensed clinical social worker, it's really, really um, a great thing. And we have, we recently we've been getting like testimonials from our families mm -hmm. um, where they recommend our program and yes they would. Mm -hmm. And what has it done for them? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, caregivers, a lot of them are saying they're starting to really feel good about what they're doing to really realize that here their loved one, you know, is at home. Yeah. We had um, someone that just died, you know, a couple of weeks ago in the late 90s. Yeah. How nice for the family to be able to say, you know, I kept my mom at home yeah. um, with services in place and she died where she wanted to be. It's, it's sad that she, she died. Yeah. Um, but to feel good about I, I kept her home and that there are, uh, you know, a program like the AFC program that provides support and encouragement to you while you do this and they put value on what you do as a caregiver, appreciate what you do. Yeah. A lot of times we go out to these homes and we have an agenda, yes, we're going to be doing teaching about this or we're going to be doing that. Um, but we go in and there may be a stressful situation and we have to switch gears and say, this is what we're dealing with right now. This caregiver is under an enormous amount of stre stress. What can we do right now to help them deal with it? Yeah, no, that must be um, you know, so empowering for the family to, with a little support, be able to do what seems like sometimes a really huge um, task, like keeping that person at home. And I know it seems like that safety is such a huge kind of concern in the medical community. And so often we see um, older people and younger people with disabilities kind of forced into institutional settings because of people's um, concerns about safety. And what I find interesting sometimes is when you hear, actually when it, someone's in an institution, they're not necessarily safer than someone in the community because of staffing levels in, in nursing homes. Um, someone may need assistance and uh, someone might not come for, for hours, really. And, um, you know, that. so when you compare institution to home, it's, um, you know, sometimes in the home setting, you actually have more support. I think there's um, less, even though you, you have risk at home, yeah. 
you have a nurse and a social worker that go out there, and mm -hmm. if they see something, okay, there's scatter rugs that, okay, mm -hmm. someone's going to trip over, or um, look at this stair, it's too high, or this mm -hmm. handrail is loose, or they work with the, you know, uh, adaptive equipment mm -hmm. that would be needed for a person to be safe at home when someone goes from maybe a um, walker to a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, but our social worker, really, they do a home assessment and they mm -hmm. assist the family with, with safety all around. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as situations change, um, maybe there's things like medical alert bracelets, mm -hmm. um, safety alarms, different places, how someone with Alzheimer's, what we do next. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of um, education given to our families. Oh, that's, that's good, and I think um, you know, it's important for families to call you. I think sometimes people are actually discouraged from um, trying to provide care in the community because of those concerns of safety. Would, I mean, would you encourage people just to, if they've been told that, oh, my loved one has to stay in a nursing home, um, call you? Oh, I would yeah. encourage yeah. them to call yeah. information yeah. or myself. Um, yeah. Jeannie Lydon, the yeah. director, I love to take personal yeah. calls like that. Yeah because we have safely taken several people out of nursing homes. Um, and that's a nice thing to be able to say. There's not, you know, they're difficult yeah. cases sometimes. Yeah. You know, one time we were, I was out in a nursing home for one, one uh, reason, and I looked and saw a young man in one of the rooms, big smile yeah. on his face, and looked very young to me. And it's like, okay, what, what is going here? on here? <laughs> Why is he here? And this was a young man who kind of fell through the cracks. His mother mm -hmm. um, had had a heart attack. He had a traumatic brain injury. She had always been taking care of him. Mm -hmm. And she was unable to advocate for him when she got sick. So we were able to get him out of that nursing home. Wow, that's, that's yep. great. Um, now, Adult Family Care, um, it's a program of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, but you, for you, this program, you have a larger service area. Is that correct? We travel. Uh -huh. Bar and right. uh, we, we have clients up in uh, the Merrimack Valley area, Georgetown, Lawrence, we'll go south. We will travel for an appropriate caregiver, an appropriate home, we will travel. So we have a group of uh, five nurses, five social workers, and they have certain catch areas that they travel to. Yeah. So it's not too often that you hear us say no uh -huh, to it. And the program's uh, really grown. Uh, how many participants? It's really grown. We have have about 154 um, participants right now. Mm -hmm. Um, a hundred, about a hundred or so are level two clients, a more complex um, client. But that's not to say some of our level one clients, you know, cues and supervision, they, they could be, require a lot too. Great. So um, if someone wants to find out more about the program, um, where can they call? They could call age information or they could check out our um, website, some of the Cambridge Elder Services. Mm -hmm and AFC, uh, yeah. Home Services. And the age info number at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services? 617-628-2601. Mm -hmm. okay. um, ask age information, and um, they do a good at referral. So they'll take an initial referral, and yeah. then the next step, it will be coming over to our department, and our um, social worker would do a um, phone intake and decide okay. when the nurse, the next yeah. step would be a phone intake. Um, sounds like every, you know, we found out um, insurance, mass health, whatever the information we need on a phone intake, then our nurse and social worker would schedule a visit to go out and do an assessment. Okay, and if adult family care uh, isn't right for a particular family, um, can Age Info explore other options with the callers? They certainly okay. can, and even we have sometimes that a family mm -hmm. it may not work one home, mm -hmm. and um, we have other homes, that's one thing, but there are other programs. We have home care programs. We, there is a personal care attendant program um, in the state of Massachusetts mm -hmm. where someone takes their um, MassHealth dollar and mm -hmm. it's consumer directed. And um, that's another program that's, uh, that's an option for somebody. Um, with that program, uh, the PCA program, um, they would need physical hands-on hands assist with two or more activities of daily living. So someone like uh, someone with a traumatic brain injury that mm -hmm. may just need cues and supervision they would not meet the criteria of the PCA exactly. program because it's more physical, physical, uh, hands-on, hands-assist that okay, person great. would be. So, so folks can call Age Info and, and learn about many of the options in the community that are available to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been really interesting. Thank you for joining me today, Jeannie. My pleasure. Great. Thanks for watching Active Aging. Please join us next month when we'll bring you more strategies for aging well. It's the time of year again when Medicare beneficiaries can change their drug plan or Medicare supplement. 
This period is called open enrollment and it goes from October 15th to December 7th. With both the health plans and the drug plans, the health insurance companies like Blue Cross, Tufts, and AARP are allowed to make changes as to what they cover and how much they want to charge. Your current drug plan premium could go up or down, and they may drop or add different medications that they've been covering for this past year. If you'd like to meet with someone to help you in deciding if you should change plans for 2012, please call our Aging Information Center and let one of our information specialists know that you'd like to meet with a SHINE counselor. SHINE counselors can assist you in finding the most cost-effective plans that fit your specific needs and covers all of the medications that you are currently taking. They can meet with Medicare beneficiaries who live in Somerville and Cambridge at no cost and regardless of income level. Call 617-628-2601, extension 3151, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Remember that these plans must be changed before December 7th, which is a little earlier than last year's deadline of December 31st. Drugs and alcohol are a very real problem for many in our community. Since 1970, CASPAR, the Cambridge and Somerville Programs for Alcoholism and Drug Rehabilitation, has been working to prevent and treat addiction among our neighbors. We do this by offering an array of programs intended to save lives and promote healthier lifestyles. Every year, CASPAR serves over 2,500 area adult and youth. If you seek services, please call us. We understand. CASPAR provides hope for today so that recovery is possible tomorrow. Drugs and alcohol are a very real problem for many in our community. Since 1970, CASPAR, the Cambridge and Somerville Programs for Alcoholism and Drug Rehabilitation, has been working to prevent and treat addiction among our neighbors. We do this by offering an array of programs intended to save lives and promote healthier lifestyles. Every year, CASPAR serves over 2,500 area adult and youth. If you seek services, please call us. We understand. CASPAR provides hope for today so that recovery is possible tomorrow. Oh, you need pop, pop, pop. next week at the same time for more Flufferette Melodies. Your announcer is Hal Miller. This is the Yankee Network. You know well enough You will get your wishes With marshmallow fluff And each and every serving Of this empty Oh, you need fluff
tell you is that true? Because I know that I can't give you what you want. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't know I'm just here to steal you wrong. I'm whoa, whoa. 